Hello and welcome to Open Tuition's lecture series on the SEMA paper F1, financial reporting, and all these notes have been updated for the 2019 syllabus. So let's go through and start off with some introductions. Who am I? Well, I'm Chris Barlow. I'm going to go through and take you through everything that is required to get you through successfully through the SEMA F1 exam. So I've gone through and prepared the videos, I've prepared the class notes, the practice questions that are there too, are there for you to answer in your own time and all. If worked through together alongside a question and answer kit from your chosen tuition provider, that should be enough to go through there and see you through the exam. So let's go through and have a look at various bits and pieces in this simple little introduction. I think the first thing to focus upon is looking at what is on the F1 syllabus. Because although the title of the paper is financial reporting, there is more to the paper than just an advancement from what you've seen on your initial introduction to the world of financial accounting. So what we've got, first of all, 10% of the syllabus is in relation to the regulatory environment of financial reporting. So that's where we bring in who goes through and prepares our rules and regulations surrounding financial statements. So all of our accounting standards, our international accounting standards being the focus of the F1 paper. How are they developed? Who is responsible for developing them? We also go on as well to start to introduce the world of ethics, obviously a key part of every paper, but here's where we see it as an introductory fashion in relation to the preparation of a set of financial statements. And then we also touch upon as well corporate governance and the different types of corporate governance codes that we have in the UK and in the US. The big portion of this syllabus, 45%, so nearly half of it, is all to do with your financial statement. So building upon your previous knowledge of the statement of financial position, the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, your statement of change in equity, and also your statement of cash flows. And what we do now is we advance that knowledge and introduce new accounting standards. So we recap bits and pieces from property, plant and equipment, but we also bring in new standards in relation to leases, intangibles, impairments, etc. So some really interesting, relevant stuff if you're in a financial role that involves the preparation of financial statements. We also touch upon tax. It's only briefly, it's only 20% and effectively it's the only real element of tax that you see throughout your SEMA qualification. But in the principles of tax, we're primarily focusing on your direct and your indirect types of taxes with a particular focus on what we have with regards to a company. So starting to look there at things such as taxes on your income, so income tax, capital gains tax, and then also beginning to look in a little bit at your value added tax or sales tax in some jurisdictions. We don't go into any crazy, ridiculous rules. We just focus upon the basics and the essentials to give you a really good, solid understanding of what the fundamentals of taxation are within the real world. We also then look at, if you like, your working capital and how to manage your cash. So it sort of links into the financial statements, doesn't it, in that we're looking at the cash balance, receivables, payables and inventory really important components to form the liquidity of an entity. So we need to be able to make sure that we are able to manage that liquidity to ensure that we have enough cash to be able to meet the day-to-day -day basic needs of our business. And that is where the final 25%. So that there is the four key areas of the syllabus. As you know from having studied other SEMA papers, that you can't just cherry pick areas of the syllabus. You need to have a good comprehensive knowledge across all areas of the syllabus to maximise your chances of passing the exam. If we look at what the exam contains, and you should be relatively familiar with this already, but not doesn't do any harm to go through and recap, does it? So we all know that it is a computer-based assessment. Those days of paper-based exams have long gone under the SEMA syllabus. The exam consists of objective test questions. So... When we're looking at the objective test questions, there will be 60 in your exam. So based upon that, 
that should be the number of questions that you get on each part of the syllabus. So you'll get six questions on a combination of ethics, governance and the regulation of the financial statements. 27 questions on the preparation of account and the accounting standards that go into preparing the individual balances. 12 questions on taxation over direct, indirect taxes. And then you're managing your cash and your working capital. You've got 15 questions on those there. So covering, if you like, the management of cash with regards to budgeting, but then start to think about working capital and how we manage inventory receivables and payables. So you can't just focus on one area of the syllabus. You have to go through and cover all because you know you are going to get examined on all areas of that syllabus. Switching back to the exam, uh, it's 90 minutes. You've got that 15 minute tutorial as well, just to reacquaint yourself with the style of the exam and how it works. But if you've got 90 minutes and you've got 60 questions, I think it works out, is it there at 90 seconds per question? Now, admittedly, you're not going to sit there and spend 90 seconds on each of those questions. Some of those questions you can do a lot quicker than others. So we'll, we'll see a little bit more about exam technique as we progress through the syllabus. But I think the key thing is, is that when you're in the exam, is to work through the questions 1 to 60 in that order first and identify any of the easier ones that you can do first. And hopefully by the time that you've got through those 60 questions, some of the easier ones, i.e. those with non-complex computations and ones that require some form of narrative within the answer, they tend to be easier. And hopefully by the time through you've got through those 60 questions, you may have got 10 or 15 questions out of the way. And that could be 10 or 15 questions that you're looking to get right as well. Okay, You shouldn't be having to guess. The pass mark is, well, you've got 150 marks available uh, over the exam uh, and you have to pass by getting a scale score of 100. So I think that works out at 66.7% that you need to get right. But obviously there will be some questions in there depending upon who sits the egg, that question that will be more difficult than others. And they will go through there and weight that up overall in terms of the questions that you get within the exam. So don't judge too much about the, the mark that you get overall. Obviously, the more you get over the 100, the better you've done. The focus is getting that 100 out of the 150 to ensure that you get a pass. Uh, there's no reference materials, so that there isn't. Uh, any formula sheets or, or anything like that that you would see in other exams. So it's just you, the computer, uh, and the resources that you have within the computer. So the the, the, the calculator, the scratch pad, etc. The exam questions, again, I think you should be familiar with them by now. But just in case that you aren't, maybe this F1 is the first exam that you've done. I don't know. Uh, you could have a multiple choice question. So multiple choice questions is you need to get one answer from any potential four. There you go. Uh, doesn't show A, B, C or D there, but you need to choose one of them. And that is the correct answer. The other three are obviously incorrect. The other choice that you've got in terms of your objective test questions is your multiple response. So you need to keep an eye out on those because that's where you will have to tick more than one box. So in this instance that you've got there, it wants you to check the box twice. So two separate boxes uh, to give you the correct answer. There is no partial credit. So if you get one of the two right, you've got the question wrong. It doesn't scale it and give you half of the mark that will be available for this question. It's either all or nothing. The other type of objective test question that you have is a drag and drop. So as an example, you've got a question here that starts talking about, I think, investment property, which I don't think it is on this paper, but let's not worry. All you have to do there is you've got two boxes that need to be populated with two of those numbers that you have given to you. So you need to run through the calculations. The number that appears on your calculator should appear somewhere down here, and you can go through there and drag and drop it into the correct box. Again, if you get it right in both boxes, you get the marks. If you get one of them wrong, you get no marks whatsoever. 
We've also got fill in the blank, so number entry type questions. So again, you've got a question here. I think it's in relation to tax, which we do see within this syllabus. All you need to do is just add the number in there without any commas at all. And again, just pay close attention. that It says give your answer to the nearest whole number. So if you get a decimal on your calculator, you need to follow the normal rules of mathematical rounding. Greater than 0.5, round up. Less than 0.5, round down. So you need to be very careful to make sure that you follow the instructions given. Other ones as well, you could have a mix of number entry and also, if you like, selecting from a box. So again, this is a question from SEMA F1. So again, you need to work out the figure to enter into the box and then decide whether it's a balancing allowance or a balancing charge. Again, if you get the number right, but say it's a balancing charge when it should be a balancing allowance, there's no partial credit, so you don't get any of the marks. Uh, one, th th there's plenty of others. I've got hotspot in there. Having gone through the syllabus several times now, I, I can't see how that would appear within this type of exam. That tends to be used whereby there's some form of, of graph that, that needs to be used to help you answer the question. And we don't see that many graphs here within F1. But be aware, just in case. Uh, so the key to success, how are you going to go through and get that scaled score of 100 out of 150? I think we've touched upon it already, haven't we? Study the entire syllabus. Don't cherry pick areas that you like and focus more on those compared to the areas that you don't like. You need to cover 100% of the syllabus because you know there will be a question on that particular area somewhere within the exam. Focus on the basics. There are some areas that are much easier than others. And if you can get those easier questions right in the exam, that frees up a little bit more time to work through those more challenging computational questions. So a better understanding of the basics, more focus on the basics will make sure that you perform better within the exam. Uh, question practice is imperative. So there's questions in our class notes. There's some practice questions online as well on the Open Tuition website. Practice those. Don't worry too much about time conditions initially. Similarly, start practicing those questions within the revision kit, the question and answer bank of your chosen tuition provider. And then as you get closer to the exam, a few weeks before, start practicing the questions to time. So start noting which type of questions you can do quicker, which type of questions take longer to do, so that you can develop a really solid exam technique as you go into that final exam. And don't forget to practice as many mock exams as is possible, because that will get you really used to doing the questions under those timed exam conditions. If you are struggling, then don't forget you've got me there to go through it and help you. Ask me on the Ask the Tutor forum on the SEMA F1 page. I'll do my best to get back to you just as a rough idea. I normally check the Ask the Tutor forums twice weekly, usually on a Wednesday or Saturday. Again, there'll be times when I may not check it twice. I have other commitments. I might be on holiday. But I'll do my level best to get back to you as quickly as is possible. Again, try and be polite on the forum. A hello, thank you, etc. Goes a long way to getting a better answer. So all I need to say is good luck. Enjoy the course. You'll be seeing plenty of me between now and when you finish the final chapter on working capital. Once you work through the entire syllabus. But make use of our free resources. And if you do have any questions, fire away and ask me on the Ask the Tutor forum. Otherwise, see you all in chapter one.